Rub up your engines! For you car purists out there, you might be happy with the Mazda Miatas. They're continuing their stick shift standard transmission even in 2020. While well, everybody else seems to be getting rid of them, the majority of the Mazda Miata convertibles that were sold in the United States were still standard transmissions. I do have to say, I've got customers with them and I love driving the ones with the standard little fun cars. The ones with the automatics, the kind of doggy and, and, and Mazda the automatic transmissions weren't always the greatest to begin with, but with the standard, those cars are fun to drive around. They've been selling these Mazda Miatas, which are technically called MX-5s, for quite some time now, and it's like one of the few bastions of the sports car that the average person can afford, and that it doesn't fall apart like an Italian sports car. They just keep running and running, and for people who like toying with them, people actually race them. They have classes where they race. You can buy a cheap old used one and fix it up or you can get a nice brand new one that's shiny that you got quite a choice and from the pauper to the rich guy either one could own that car they're, they're cute little sports cars i'm not a big mazda fan myself but they really hit the nail on the head when they made those mazda miata convertibles and they're still making them in stick shifts hey you want a little cute convertible you gotta have a stick shift that's part of the whole game yes it's official ford is going to be making the ford bronco again in 2020 they ended production in 1996 and they're making them again now they don't actually have them out yet but they are going to be making them and they're going to have some pretty interesting stuff stuff in them. They're going to have them so that the doors and the roof also come off. They can be removable like in a Jeep. It's not just a concept now. They're actually making the Ford Broncos. Back in November, Ford revealed what they called the Bronco R, and they took it to the Baja in an attempt to win the Baja race and get some kudos, but that kind of fell flat on its face. Truck didn't finish the race. They said that it got pinned by another truck in a race and got knocked apart and couldn't finish the race because mechanically they didn't want to damage the whole thing or destroy it, so they pulled it out of the race. Which doesn't bode that well, really. All the money they put into it, you think they could have had uh, some spares and put in a more gentlemanly effort to win the race other than just quitting, but I guess the times they are a-changing. <laughs> it used to be people went all out as hard as they could to win something, but now I guess the bean counters are behind it all, and they didn't want to uh, try to go too far. This kind of flies in the face in that Ford versus Ferrari, the movie about the past how Ford just threw all in to win the race there, the endurance race. Well, here, they're not finishing it they're kind of afraid so I gotta say uh give them a few stars down from that in the past they went all out but now eh, they're worried they didn't go out hey I would have gone all out and put some more into it my own beliefs on things like this are hey if you're gonna do something do it as well as you can don't hold back especially if it's something like a race I mean come on now it's like the football players they stub their toe and then they won't play the rest of the game I mean boo if a guy like that was on my team next time he came out I boom. <laughs> Hey, people should go all out. So, boo on that, but at least they're bringing the Bronco out. They don't have it all in stone how it's going to produce, but they are actually making one in 2020. Surely you know better, says. Got no six miles, the 3 2.3 automatic transmission. Transmission will not shift above fourth gear. It won't go into fifth gear. They're not the greatest transmissions in the world, but if all the other gears shift perfectly fine, I know it's generally it's not the transmission itself that has the problem. When there is either an electronic problem or some kind of problem in the engine system, that Mazda set up the computer, it'll stop at fourth gear and it won't go into fifth gear, won't go into the overdrive gear. Now, there can be lots of things, even something as weird as you got a bad spark bug and it isn't running right. So you want to check all that stuff. But let's say your car's running fine. You didn't say it was running poorly. If it's running perfectly fine, it won't go into fifth gear. My advice change the vehicle speed sensor because I fixed one like that a couple months ago. Turns out it did the same exact thing. I was running my live data machine and I looked through stuff and I saw the vehicle speed sensor data was weird. Sometimes it would drop off, sometimes it would show the wrong speed. So I just got it. It just bolts on the transmission. It's a simple job. I got one at AutoZone and I put it on and guess what? The car now shifted into fifth gear. So pray it's the vehicle speed sensor. But cars are machines. They break in pain. 
pattern, so since I fixed one that way, it could easily be just your vehicle speed sensor. He's making it not shipped into the top gear. James knows better, says, I got a 1999 Dodge Ram 1500. I took it in to get transmission rebuilt, but it won't start, and the mechanics say, it says no communication. The scan tool won't work. One, I would never go back to those guys. I'm assuming you went to a transmission shop. If you drove that thing in, it was running, and now it won't even start, won't communicate. They messed up the wiring or a sensor somehow. Now, realize when you pull a transmission off, all kinds of crap has to be taken off. And even once myself, I was doing it on a Chevy Camaro with a V6 engine, and it was one of those horrid ones that was made in Quebec. They were absolute piles of junk. It was almost impossible in the working room. Well, I got the transmission back on same thing car wouldn't start I look and lo and behold the wires that were all over the place there was no working room well when I put the transmission back in they got pinched and it cut some of the wires and rather than take the whole thing apart again which was like an eight-hour job I just looked at it and said ha okay those wires are pinched so I just cut the wires at each end where they were pinched in the transmission and I just spliced new wiring in and away it went so Tell the guys to find the problem they created by doing a transmission job. And if they can't, you're going to tow it to another garage and they're going to pay for the repairs. Then maybe they'll hire somebody from the outside to come and find out what they did wrong. Either way, I never go back to the guys because they're not very good mechanics. They didn't do the job right and all that work pulling the transmission off. There's so many wires and sensors you can get damaged. Odds are they damaged one of them. James the Liar 3 says, got an 02 Chevy Monte Carlo V6. Check engine light on, P0442, EVAP small leak. All right, those are always fun. Now, of course, change the gas cap first. A lot of times, it's just the gas cap. Go buy a gas cap, put it on. If it goes away, great. And obviously, you got a scan tool, so change the gas cap, reset the code, drive it, pray it doesn't come back. Now, if it does come back, two things that normally go wrong. One is the EVAP canister vent valve. They'll often stick open and they'll leak out. So you might want to check that. And if you don't want to check it, just buy one. And the other is the purge solenoid can go bad too. So it's always purging, which is always leaking, and you'll get a thing for small it. Those are really the three things that generally go wrong. Now to check those other two, you got to really have a bi-directional scan tool, a smoke machine. That's a real involved thing. So a lot of guys would just guess with either a EVAP canister valve or a purge valve. One of them is probably sticking open a little bit. But then again, you know, it's a 2002 and generally they run perfectly fine. So if you don't care, it isn't going to hurt anything driving them around that way. Until it comes time to get it inspected, if they do state inspections in your state, then you'd have to fix it to get it inspected. But if they don't do such things in your state, heck, you can just live with that stuff. I've had customers drive them years that way with no problems at all. <laughs> Shirley Jones 33 says, my husband's 2012 Dodge Ram truck has the SRS light on and he took it in and it had code B1C13, which is driver's headrest control circuit high. They made the wiring cheaply on the driver's headrest assembly on the seat and the wiring on those things shorts out. It's just, it was a design flaw of those things. They should have recalled them. They didn't recall them. Typical for Dodge. It is repairable if you want to go through the hassle of buying the right part. What you have to buy is the driver's seat headrest wiring set because they're just pieces of junk. Don't try fixing them. When you're dealing with stuff like airbags, believe me, you don't want to mess with fixing something and it blows when you don't want it to or doesn't blow when you want You got to buy the harness. And if I were you, I would complain to Dodge to see if maybe they'll do it for free or at least give you the part for free because it's a known flaw in those things. They just build them cheap and then the stuff breaks down on them. I wouldn't be surprised if at some time there will be a recall for them when I don't know of a recall yet, but I would be surprised in the future that they end up recalling that amongst all the other zillion recalls that Chrysler has for their products. Billy's Bone Dry says, got no sub Ford Mustang V6 4 liter. My fuel tank will only fill halfway. Here's something you may not know. You got what's called a saddle gas tank, just like the saddle you put on a horse. Your gas tank is like a saddle. There's the middle and then the tank's on the left and the right side. That's how it's made. And unfortunately, the one side gets dry and doesn't refill. You never want to run those things down close to empty because if you do, then when you try to fill it up, sometimes air stays in 
the one side and it's hard to fill and it will only fill halfway. Even though your gauge says it's full, one side of the saddle's full and the other side's full of air. Now I've seen that happen for customers of mine that kept running at low on gas. I said don't run at low on gas again. And I dropped the tank and I'd see the one side's empty. So then I would just put three gallons of gas on the empty side and then it would fill up the whole way. When it gets really low it won't refill sometimes. So don't run your car bone dry. On that particular one when you get like between half and a quarter fill back up again. But now you might have to drop the tank and fill up that other side because that air sometimes won't purge out of the things. Most gas tanks are just one tank like a fish tank and they fill up but those saddle tanks they can be stinkers. It's kind of a stupid design really. You know I mean for race cars it's fine but for a normal driving car it's, it's kind of a stupid design really. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.